What's the most important thing for a manga to have? Well, if we take a look at Hirohiko Zaraki's manga in theory, then that's probably the very first page of the manga. And while the creator of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure may have a point there, I would like to argue that it's actually something different once the manga is actually publicized in the store. And that's exactly what you're seeing right here. It's the front page. If you're familiar with YouTube, then you would argue that the most important thing is the title and the thumbnail with the thumbnail being the most important part of the both and i feel like in a certain way a manga cover is kind of like a thumbnail in fact if you see this video right now then you probably clicked on my thumbnail or on my manga cover <laughs> So now you see how important a manga cover really is. It's the reason why you even pick up the manga in the library or the bookstore. Now, to get a deeper understanding of what actually makes a good cover and what doesn't, we'll have to dive in a bit deeper and analyze a good and a bad cover. But before we get into that, let me welcome you to this new little series called Any Effects, where we talk about all sorts of anime, graphic design, editing, everything that's out there. And it's a little series that I wanted to introduce because I love graphic graphic design. I've been a graphic designer for about two years now and I've studied it for five. So I think I know what I'm talking about sort of. And to analyze graphic design is always fun, especially when it comes to anime. As for a cover that I personally really, really like, I chose the manga Tokyo Ghoul, especially the first volume. If you've read Tokyo Ghoul, then you'll know that the series is all about contrasts, all about black and whites. From Kaneki's emotions and mental state to the less metaphorical contrast between ghoul and human. Ishida here in this manga cover uses all kinds of different contrasts. First we got the contrast between light and dark. The white background not only isolates Kaneki from the background itself, showing how he feels lonely and isolated, but it also shows how he feels mentally. He is in a very dark place right now. More impressively and more visually stunning however is the color contrast. The blue turquoise in which Kaneki has been drawn totally isolates him from the bright red that his eyes painted in. In fact it almost makes it seem that this body part isn't even his. It almost seems like something other than himself is living in him. Spoilers, it also kind of happens like that in the show, but I mean, you see where I'm going. Essentially, just looking at the colors, he uses two totally separate colors that have nothing to do with each other and kind of symbolize his ghoul and his human side. Adding to that, the colors also have significance. Kaneki in itself is a very calm person and blue is the color of calmness. However, it's also the color of someone that's very cold and very sad and distant. The red, on the other hand, means passion. However, it can also mean anger in a very negative way. And I think that's where the color is going with. It symbolizes the more aggressive side, the darker side of Kaneki, the ghoul side. And in Japanese mythology, red eyes also mean eyes of demons and ghouls are sort of like demons. Another thing that I just totally love about this volume cover is the pose of Kaneki. He holds a book in his hand and if you didn't read Tokyo Ghoul, Kaneki loves reading. But in this volume cover he puts his book aside. He is doing something more important than his hobby and it's observing someone. It's looking at someone. And the way he covers his face almost seems like he wants to reflect on something. He is in doubt. Couple that with all the other clues, you can see that he is thinking really hardly about something. He is asking for a solution. He's asking someone for a solution by looking at them. That someone that he's looking at is you, the viewer. He wants to know what would you do in his place. And I think that's a very intriguing question and a question that Tokyo Ghoul in itself asks you in the series. What would you do if you would have been a ghoul? What would you do in Kaneki's place? Now Suishida has a couple of very interesting manga covers besides Tokyo Ghoul and I would really love to talk with you further about them but for that I need you to hit the subscribe button and to let me know which other manga covers I should tackle. So if you're interested in a manga or anime in particular let me know down in the comments. Now let's take a look at the manga volume that I feel is not that good. In fact it's even pretty bad and misleading um, but I, I wouldn't you know pick a random isekai or something boring. I want to spice it up. I want to show you something that in theory looks quite good aesthetically but it just doesn't work for the series it's in. It's Kaguya-sama and I just want to say I love this series very very much. It's in my top five manga of all time and I've read it all but the, the first volume just isn't 
quite good. Let me tell you why. I personally feel a manga volume should represent the series in some way. It should give you somewhat of an idea of the manga and what you will be reading. However, Kaguya-sama Love is War with its first volume just doesn't do that. If you don't know, Kaguya-sama is a romance series and it's a comedy series and it's very cute, it's very funny and it's totally not something like horror. However, this manga cover totally makes you feel like it is a horror. Just look at the colors for example. Let me give you an example of mangas that have a similar color scheme. Berserk, Junji Ito's Uzumaki, Junji Ito's Remina. What have all those mangas in common? Well, they are very gory and they are seinen mangas. In fact, Junji Ito is the most famous horror mangaka out there and he uses the same colors. Red in itself already is an aggressive color, but if you make it stand out even more by using pale colors like black and white, then it, it almost definitely makes you feel very uncomfortable and uneasy. Something very aggressive is happening on screen. It almost makes me feel like Kaguya is some sort of monster here. She looks like a vampire. Red eyes symbolize demons in Japanese mythology. And who has red eyes here? It's Kaguya. And I feel like that's the reason why I, when I first saw Kaguya, actually didn't pick up the manga. And that's why I really appreciate the later chapters of Kaguya, because they kind of fixed it. Look at this, this is volume 18 of Kaguya. And Kaguya here seems like a really enjoyable person to be around. In fact, she seems really funny. A really good representation of what you can expect in this manga. Now look at Kaguya here. She looks at you with this very big red eyes with her pale skin almost vampire like her hand separating you and her and making a pose almost like she seems ready to strike come on she makes those dinosaur hands chuck <laughs> But yeah, you see what I'm, where I'm coming from? This is why you probably would have picked up more Tokyo Ghoul instead of Kaguya when you were at the manga store. And yeah, that's why I feel that Kaguya Volume 1 is very misleading. But yeah, it's definitely interesting to look at manga volume covers because they can tell you a lot about the series and I have not seen many people discuss manga covers, so... If you want to see more, please let me know in the comments. And I want to make this series sort of a staple on this channel. Next time we'll make something very interesting and it's to AI generate a manga cover. So if you're hyped for that, let me know and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.